Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Star Flames. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe to my channel, turn on your notification bell, and join the family. Now, guys, a lot is going on as it relates to DD. Now it seems as though Lucian Grange is also doing as promised by taking down Rodney Jones' attorney because it's now being revealed that his attorney is in hot waters with the law. But let's talk about what is going on with Diddy's son, King Holmes, because now he's being sued for sexual assault. Now, I want to drag your memory a little bit so that you all can see how this correlates and connects, so that you all can realize that this lawsuit or these lawsuits are very strategic Let's get into it. If you remember when that Little Rod lawsuit came out, there was a section in it where Rodney Jones basically said that he witnessed King Combs drugging and assaulting a woman. Do you guys remember that in that lawsuit? Y'all can go back and look at the court documents and you'll see that it was included in that lawsuit. Now, the woman is coming forward and she has filed a lawsuit on her own and she's basically saying she even has audio evidence of Ken Combs basically assaulting her. But when I read the article, there's so many red flags, like there's so many things questionable about this lawsuit. Make no mistakes. I'm not saying that this never happened. You know, but the questions are there, the red flags are there, and I cannot help but to recognize and identify that there are flaws in this lawsuit. So let's get into the report. So they're saying that Diddy's son, Christian King Holmes, is being sued for sexual assault and the alleged victim claims she has audio recordings of him forcing himself on her during a yacht party. And another accuser, Rodney Jones, is involved too. Remember when I said that Rodney basically spoke about this in his lawsuit? I believe this is what the victim is saying. Now, Grace Omar Cake just filed the suit against King in LA, alleging she was working as a steward on a yacht. She claims Diddy himself chartered a few days before New Year's Eve, and this is back in 2022. Now, in the suit, Omar Keek alleges she was doing her job during the Ching Ding, which he claims was advertised as a family-friendly excursion, and King came on, after which he claims he immediately became fixated on her, uncomfortably so. She alleges King had her take a shot of liquor, and she claims she immediately suspected it was Spike. Now, let's pause for a bit there, because for anyone who has worked as a hostess on a yacht, sh um, cruise ship, or any of these top events, there's one thing that you're always being told. Like you have like a, a sheet, they provide you with do's and don'ts, also a contract. And that is you never ever allow a guest to hand you a drink. Not only that, you don't drink while you're on duty. Not only that, even if we have to drink water, that water should be handled by you only or a team member. So this already, I'm asking, like, this is a violation, I believe, of her contract as well, because she should not be taking a shot on the job. It's not as though she, this is a nightclub, she's a body girl, it's expected, and even some clubs don't allow you to, you know, drink with a guest. So this already is just a big red flag. But let's continue because we're not saying that she's telling a lie. I'm just saying that there are far too many red, red flags in this lawsuit. But let's continue. 
right? So she suspected that it was spite. When you suspect that something is spite, what do you do? Don't you run to someone to get assistance if you can? Try to get some water in your system as quick as you can. But let's continue and hear what she says happens next. She's saying, but despite that, she was able to tell him to get off her and leave her alone. She claims King was trying to kiss and grope her despite her pro protestations. Oh. Now, a marquee lawsuit purports to describe audio recordings of what she claims to pick depict her telling King she's not interested in sex with him and trying to get away from him while they were together in a studio on the yacht. Eventually, she says she was able to get away. Claims King insisted she find him a place to sleep, so she, so she says she led him to the theater. Now, whew, this lawsuit is a trip because... If someone spiked your drink, then try to force themselves self on you. Why would you be leading someone to the theater? Wouldn't you say to the person, yes, I'm going to prepare a room or whatever for you. Give me one minute. You go to your team captain. You let them know what is going on. Like, this is why I'm saying it's too much of a red flag because your drink was spiked. The guy needs somewhere to sleep. Then you let him to the theater. It's not making any sense. It's really not making any sense. It's not making much sense. <laughs> but let's continue. Now, she's saying that once there, Homer K claims King um, coerced her again and attempted to force her to perform oral sex on him. What did she think was going to happen? Come on, ladies. Now, she says, but, but she says she put him off and includes in the dark photos of her forearm, which she claims was bruised in the altercation. It could also be consensual sex. Because I cannot understand, I would have to see the entire lawsuit to understand it because oftentimes these articles are written to convey a certain emotion, judging from what they've done, you know, as it relates to their reporting on the lawsuit that was filed against Ye. They normally just take bits and pieces and put it in their own words and put it into the article. So... While the media could be reporting this, the actual court documents could provide a lot more clarity into it. So I'm going to lurk around to see if I can get the actual documents because the actual documents does have the real information. The article is way, way too sketchy. It's not adding up. And here you can tell that the, the, um, report is leaving out a lot of vital information and this is why we cannot see these media reports and really understand what is going on the court documents actually gives more clarity sheds more light into the actual events because here she's saying that her arms bruise she's showing bruises but when you think if you're thinking without emotions and if you're just thinking from a clear free mind you would say this seems like consensual sex seems as though she had an ulterior motive because how did you get to record it it's not included in the article but I know that it is included in the court documents and I think that's where we have all the answers but I want to go through the entire article, so let's continue. She says, after he basically forced her to perform oral sex on him, she says she fought him off and includes in the doc photos of her forearm, which he claims was bruised in the altercation. Eventually, Homer K says she was able to escape but claims to have suffered mentally and emotionally ever since then. 
she claims Rodney Jones, Diddy, formerly hired music producer, who's also suing Diddy, who was in the mix for this yacht party. And she's been ripped by Tyrone Blackburn, the same lawyer who filed Rodney's lawsuit. You know, I honestly think they should lock up Rodney Jones because how do you stand around to witness so much illegal activities? I do think Rodney Jones deserves to go down with Diddy because it's as though you you stood by for so many years and you were an accomplice to all of these, you know, unlawful acts. You just turn a blind eye and know that it's at your door. You want to cry, me too, me too. Like... You know, you want to see, make it make sense. But let's continue, shall we? They're saying Diddy is named as a defendant in this lawsuit as well, accused of being liable for actually chartering the yacht. Omar Kay also claims to have witnessed Diddy on board with women she calls sex workers and that Diddy exposed himself to young Miami while they, um, played a game of Carisha Please. Interestingly, she says that was all recorded by a Hulu camera crew. Omar King is suing Diddy specifically for aiding and abetting King in the alleged assault. Oof, this is a trip. This is a trip. So, as it relates to the attorney, they're saying Blackburn's filing of Omar Kig's suit comes two days after he himself got into some legal hot waters. He will have to go before the Grievance Committee of New York Federal Court System for improperly filing cases in federal court to garner media attention, embarrass defendants with salacious allegations, and pressure defendants to settle quickly. Worst case scenario is the committee could recommend he be dis- um, disbarred. So basically, what they're pushing for here is for Blackburn to lose his license. And this is what Lucian Grange was talking about. And I think we can now see where his threats, as I said, that what he said in the initial report was very much a promise. It was more than a threat. It was very much a promise because if Blackburn um, goes to court, as they're saying, he could be disbarred. And I believe that's what they're Aiming for. I believe that they want to just execute power and authority because it's not the legal system that actually works with these people. It's who have power and authority. Now, <laughs> I don't know who does this to a lawyer unless there is some kind of solid evidence that the claims are true, right? But I, I want to talk about that in a separate video. But through this um, report, we're going to continue because they're saying that Diddy's attorney, Aaron Dyer, tells TMZ, we have not seen this woman claim, but I'm sure we can expect the same kind of manufactured lies we've come to expect from Tyrone Blackburn and his clients. Just as we saw in Rodney Jones' lawsuit, which is yet to be served, he adds, they learn about the lawsuit the same way anyone hears about Mr. Blackburn filing through the media. Okay, so they did the same thing to Ye. So does it mean that um, the lawyer that keeps doing this to Ye should also be disbarred? I mean, it would only make sense. Fear is fear. But I want to hear from you guys. This is the end of it. I'm going to do another video because I could actually smell this coming. I spoke about it with Lucian Grange. I could actually smell that this man was about to exhaust power and authority over the... This is not even authority. This is a manipulation of power. But you know what? Let's say... Because you see, sometimes horrible things happen to people. It could possibly end up where blood... Blackburn is disbarred, but with them disbarring him could actually push him into the direction that he really needs to be. 
You know how sometimes we think that we were meant to be a teacher, a lawyer, a nurse, or a doctor, but our life purpose is something totally different. And once you step on that road to, or that journey to your life purpose, then things seem a lot less stressful. You have greater peace of mind. You start looking younger, more fresh. It's like, you know, God and his angels are always surrounding you. If they happen to disbar Blackburn, I believe that is what's going to happen for him. He's going to end up finding his life purpose and being out of the mess of these, you know, us. <laughs> you know what? Let me not say that. These people. And that's all I have to say about that. Coming back with another video on Anushan Grange, because if you'll watch that last video, I smell this coming. I knew it was coming, but let me know what are your thoughts while you're at it. Thumbs up, share, stay safe, stay blessed, and see you all later. Peace.